Hey there guys and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Bottom Line. I'm your host Emil and today I've got another interesting guest like I always say with every of my guests because all of them have their very own interesting story like today's person. So Lincoln Mali is an experienced big with over 25 years in the industry. Lincoln is currently the CEO of Southern Africa for Lasaka Technologies Incorporated. Now, Lasaka is a NASQIC and a JAC limited company focused on fintech in the financial inclusion space in Southern Africa. For more info, you can go to the website www.lasaka.lasakatech.com. But Lincoln made the move to Lasaka, formerly known as Net One UEPS Technologies Incorporated, in 2021, following his role as head of group Car Payments and Standard Bank Group. Lincoln, how are you doing? Strong man, how are you? I am doing good. I'm just a bit, ru- oh, not rushed, I was a bit tired because before you, we had Motome, okay. MIC CEO, yes. MIC to CEO in here as well. Okay. So we just had a full day of CEO. <laughs> no worries. But before we do go, I just want to quickly say 25 years in the banking industry, that is why well, I just can't even begin to imagine because you've been, you've seen how much banking and fintech has evolved over the years. Indeed, it's been a fascinating journey, uh, especially uh, both here in South Africa and, and on the continent. I've uh, worked a lot on the continent. You just see the changes that have taken place. But my view is that the best is yet to come. <laughs> There's lots of changes still so coming with, in the future. So, South Africa, we are quite like, we're a bit more advanced than other countries when it comes to banking, especially with the online bank. I know the States doesn't have that yet. I don't know if they're implementing it anytime soon. But before we carry on with our sidetracking comments, we'll have it off to the interview. Yes. What gap in the market does Lasaka like address? We're trying to serve the underserved. Uh, in the consumer space, for example, we um, provide financial services to social grant beneficiaries who do not get access to financial services. Uh, in the micro merchant space or spaza shops, we provide uh, services there. And then we've got in the middle section with those entrepreneurs or, or, or businesses or merchants who don't get a full um, you know, a financial service experience. And then obviously we then deal with large corporates, which are obviously much more better focused. So our view is provide uh, financial services to those that are underserved. So in your previous statement, you were saying a lot about services. Well, what are the two categories of services Lasaka offers? So we offer a full range. We can offer cash solutions. We can offer card solutions. We offer lending solutions. We offer VAS, which is uh, your very added services. We are able to offer payment solutions. And we're a- also able to offer data and analytics solutions. So we, you offer, quite we, a bit. we offer quite a bit um, because we think that when you create an ecosystem, you are able to leverage of that ecosystem to solve some of your customers' problems. Mm-hmm. And with that, having more solutions, you can solve multiple problems at the same time. Absolutely. So how does Lasaka focus on financial inclusion, which benefits the communities they serve? So if I can just give you a couple of examples. If you go to an engine garage mm. uh, in a township and you pay with cash, that cash will go to a vault. Yeah. That's a vault we have. That money is immediately digitized which means it's available to the entrepreneur who runs the engine to be able to able to pay their suppliers immediately. Cash flow is everything to an entrepreneur. Yeah. But that's not all. We're able to lend to that uh, entrepreneurs uh, because we can see the flows. So we use the data. So rather than them waiting for uh, three years financial statements to go to a bank, we're using those flows to be able to lend uh, to those uh, entrepreneurs. This is just one example of what we can do with data and technology to be able to solve a problem that a client has. So that brings up a question for me that I'm actually just really more curious about now is so you're saying that they take the hard cash to the vault and then you guys digitize that hard cash into digital money well digital cash yes what happens with the hard cash does it the hard cash will still be collected mm-hmm. but we take the risk because we've built a vault that's uh, category four that's very okay. strong so you are then able to get the cash in transit companies to come but if you were to wait the traditional way you would have to wait for all of that time for them to come collect the money go count it only then do you get your money as an entrepreneur so while you're doing digital service you're also creating a safety thing as well absolutely digital services absolutely so beyond the information provided that i got from your website and different articles can you speculate on any potential challenges the sega might face in achieving its mission I think that the challenges are not insurmountable. 
because you know sometimes when we think of competition in our world the inefficiency is the competition the current financial system is inefficient for merchants and uh consumers in that low uh and uh, low end environment so we think that the more we are able to digitize commerce the more the regulatory environment in this country changes to enable non-banks to participate in the payment system. Thirdly, the more we're able to get data and analytics about what's happening in the township environment, those things will make our job even more easier. So the well, Seca's mission and financial solutions are offered to both the consumer and the merchants, but yes. how does LASIC approach potentially contribute to a more financial inclusive society because I mean it focuses on both consumers and merchants it's quite a lot to handle and you know there's like sometimes there are in some instances there are a lot of mishaps all financially going in different places records not being kept so how do you guys do that with the inclusivity of society so if you just take consumers um, social grant beneficiaries three years ago would be paid their grants in cash in an open field in the most undignified manner we've been able to champion for them to be paid their money within the payment system. What that means is that now somebody has got a transactional account, they can get a, a, a loan and they can get a funeral plan. So already the person who would have been out of the financial system is fully in the financial system and they can get theirs and they can get loyalty. Now you're starting to treat that person as a fully fledged uh, consumer. Let's take a spaza shop. Again, people would have said, this is not a market. We would give them a pause device based on their transactions. And they're able to sell VAS products. When they run out, we lend the money to be able to buy more VAS so that they can sell to more. But we go further. We then make sure that many of those pause devices can take card transactions. Now suddenly they can take care card or they can take cash. But we go further and say, if you now want to pay your suppliers, we can make you pay your suppliers from your post device so that the, the, the truck that is bringing the goods doesn't have to bring cash. You just get a QR code and you've already paid. Oh, wow. And then using, again, the data, we can now also lend them money. Now, all of these things means that these people that would have been ignored before are now part of the payment system and we can actually open up the payment system and actually bring financial inclusion or empowerment as we would say we would want to drive a mindset that says how do we make people fulfill their potential many of our entrepreneurs and many of our grant beneficiaries have not fully uh, realized their potential we need to give them solutions that enable them to fulfill their potential so just briefly um you have been in like i said in the beginning you've been in the banking industry for 25 years and with fintech always evolving with new things coming out every single time from capitech fmb all the way even to standard bank as well what advice do you have for the youth that are interested in getting into fintech or that are already in the fintech field i always say that it's important to understand what problem are you trying to solve what pain point are you trying to solve i think sometimes people get fixated on the tech. Everybody can develop a tech mm. or code. But unless you ident identify the problem you're trying to solve and then develop solutions towards that, you can actually upend an industry. You can actually blow many of your competitors out of the water because you fully understood what is the pain point of the client and you develop, you develop a solution that solves that problem. So whether you're in banking or whether you're in a fintech, always know what problem you're trying to solve and make sure that your solution is trying to solve that problem and you make it easier for people, particularly people that are in townships and villages who need solutions that can solve their problems either of access to money or transport or any or security or any of those things. Be very clear what problem you're trying to solve. Well, Lincoln, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, and thanks for the good work you guys are doing. <laughs> thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you, especially now that I understand a bit more about fintech and how what you guys actually do for community base and how much fintech has actually evolved <laughs> in a lot of aspects. It's exciting times. I can it tell is. you that. We, we're growing in the township mm. and villages. So, yeah, thank you for having us. 
And thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this interview, please leave a like and share the video. And like I always say, please share with your friends, family, and your coworkers. Lincoln, I just want to say again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.